finding words to do justice to the life of Father Theodore M. Hesburgh, CSC. In remembering Ted's life, we must also, of course, speak about his devotion to and love of the University of Notre Dame, an institution he led for 37 years and which was transformed under his leadership. Father Ted had the vision of building today what Notre Dame is, and that meant upgrading the academic standards as well as the facilities on campus. And that's the leadership he is. You know, I cannot think of a man probably who is not more recognized in the United States and the world for being a religious education leader. Controversy follows transformative leaders, and it did with Father Ted. In a famous 1967 Land O'Lakes statement, he insisted on academic freedom and institutional autonomy for Catholic universities. And some said Father Ted contributed to tendency to secularization. I must say that in all my conversations with him, Father Ted's abiding concern was with Notre Dame's fidelity to its Catholic mission. Yet he was always convinced that Notre Dame could not serve the church and the world effectively unless it sought genuine scholarly excellence. And this could not be achieved without enjoying appropriate institutional autonomy and academic freedom. To the river, baptize, be converted and I feel all right. I've been born again. I've been born again. We had another common credo. If you're damned if you do and damned if you won't, don't, then do. Don't ever forget that one, young people. And uh, He would often say, um, don't worry about that, we'll let the, the lady on the dome worry about that, uh, the, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And, that, and he meant it. Um, so he, he was the, the head of a major research university for so many years and helped build a major research university. He was comfortable with presidents and popes and academics and politicians, but at heart he was uh, a blessed with abundant common sense, good judgment, wisdom, a kind of quiet but obvious piety, and all the characteristics one would hope for in a priest of the Catholic Church. My parents were so happy that their 19-year-old daughter, leaving home for the first time, was going to come to Notre Dame. They knew that Father Ted would watch over her. And watch over me, he did, just as he did the entire student body. You could walk along the quad. You could see Father Ted talking to students about the issues of the day, equality and peace and justice. He had us engage in a day of fasting to remember what it was like to be hungry. And when a light was on in the president's office just beneath the Golden Dome, students would point and say, Father Ted is working late tonight. Father Ted used our university here in South Bend as his launching point to change the world. He knew that by engaging with society far from home, he could demonstrate the power and the value of a Notre Dame education. He could raise the profile of the university and expand its mission. He could introduce Catholic beliefs into the discussion of the day's issues and promote acceptance for people of all faiths. And he proved that faith could and should play an essential role in the progress of society, not contained to the four walls of a church, but a living, dynamic resource infused in thought and action. Father Soren, who uh, really in Notre Dame's history uh, as the founder is the only person who uh, rivals Father Hesburgh in terms of impact uh, on it. Uh, some have said that Father Hesburgh is second only to Father Soren. Others have said Father Soren is second to Father Hesburgh. But uh, they certainly are the two most important figures in Notre Dame's history and, and have um, made it uh, first uh, a small Midwestern university and then into one of the great institutions in the world. And once when I ask him, how can you advise anybody to be a leader of a great nation, he said, 
be human. I took that advice as well. Father Ted Hesburgh filled many roles throughout his life. Spiritual leader, ally of popes and presidents, even representative to the International Atomic Energy Commission. But beyond any other title, the one he cherished most was Father Ted. Oh!